So I'll talk about privacy preserving search of similar patients in genomic data. Uh, that's joint work with Gilad Ashaw, who is currently at Cornell Tech, Yudha Lindel at Barilan, and Tal Rabin, who's my colleague in, I in IBM. Um, and let me start from, uh, well, and in addition to that, there are p these, uh, a few other people, uh, Shalev and Meital uh, from Barilan, who actually wrote the code for that uh, using uh, the SCAPI library. Um, let me start from a motivated uh, scenario. Uh, so imagine a world where, uh, which is probably only three years uh, from us right now, uh, where uh, genome databases are, lo are all over the place and everybody uses them in medicine and, and such. Uh, and you have a setting where uh, patients go to the doctor's office and the doctor gets the patient's uh, genome sequence uh, and wants to use this genome in order to help uh, either diagnose or treat some conditions that the patient has. And for that purpose, you want to access some genomic data, databases out there. Um, and you want to compare the sequence of your patient with the sequences in that database. And each sequence in the database is already tagged with uh, all kinds of uh, conditions that that person had and treatment options and how did they work and things like that. So you want to get, um, you want to compare your own patient's data with all the sequences in the database, identify the few closest sequences in the database to your own patients, and see what conditions they had, or how did that particular treatment work for them, or things like that. Uh, and of course, the challenge here is that everything here is very private. I mean, genome sequence is private not just for me, but also for my kids and parents. Uh, you don't want to expose it too much. And that goes both ways. The doctors may not want to reveal the sequence of, the, of their patients to the database. The database doesn't want to reveal necessarily the sequences in it to the doctor. Uh, so you want to do that in a privacy-preserving manner. Um, that uh, scenario was exactly the one that was uh, announced by Aidash. Uh, Anand talked about Aidash uh, in his talk. This is an organization uh, that tries to promote uh, privacy-preserving uh, work, working on, uh, on data. Uh, and they had this uh, competition with three tracks. This is the second one of them. This is the competi their competition from 2016. A privacy-preserving search of similar cancer patient across the organization using secure multi-party computation. Um, and the thing that they described is exactly the scenario that I had. You have uh, a query sequence with just a single sequence. You have a database with a whole bunch of sequences. You want to identify the few closest query, uh, sequences in the database to your query. Uh, and the measure of distance that you use is added distance, uh, which is apparently a common uh, thing in genomic. Um, and then you want to output the tags that are associated with these closest sequences in a database. So these tags would typically be conditions, treatment options, etc. Um, so here is the, and the nice thing about these iDash competitions is that that only announce the uh, problem that you want to solve. They actually give you data uh, on which you need to run it so that you can actually get very concrete about solving the problem in a particular domain on a particular scale, uh, which le lets you uh, design sort of solutions uh, beginning to end. So this is the type of data that they had uh, in their um, competition last year. There is a client with a single query. There is a database. In their case, the database had only 500 hundred se sequences. Uh, the length of each sequence was about 3,500. And these were act taken from actual uh, genome database in a particular reg region that's correlated to some kind of cancer. Uh, and the thing about that particular region is it's a relatively high diversity region. If you compare genomes of two people, they're 99 point something, 999 uh, percent similar. These particular regions are not. Each two individuals has like three to five percent differences uh, in that particular region. Uh, 
So what they wanted us to do is to come up with a secure computation protocol that returns the list of conditions associated for the k closest sequences in the database, where k is a parameter, but in, the, in this case we're thinking, well, k equals 5. So there are 500 sequences. You want to identify the five closest and return only the conditions that are associated with these, with these things. Uh, so let me uh, stop for a second and recall what is secure computation. Uh, what is it that we want? So the generic form of a secure computation is we have a multiple parties. Uh, each party has its own private input. And what they want is to compute some aggregate function across all of their inputs. Uh, and the point about it is that they want to do it in a private setting. So what they want to learn is the outcome, the output of this function, but not they don't want to reveal each other their input. In our case, only two parties. There's the doctor that has the sequence of the, uh, the patient, and then there's the server that has the database. Uh, and the function that you want to evaluate is uh, the conditions associated to the five closest database sequence to the query. Uh, and in this case, the twist, the little bit of twist in that only one side is supposed to learn the outcome. Only the doctor is supposed to know what the answer is. The, the server doesn't need to learn anything. Um, actually, IDASH are running these competitions for a couple of years now, and in 2015 they had a very similar thing. Uh, and there was actually a, a nice uh, solution uh, by Wang et al. Uh, for the 2015 competition, uh, which essentially solves the same problem, but in a very different uh, domain. There was much lar larger data a lot less variation, and they solve it by reducing it to edit distance. So in their 2016 edition, they say, OK, now we're going to give you a, a, a data set on which the solution for 2015 doesn't actually apply. It doesn't give you good results. Now solve it in this domain. Uh, so that was their uh, thing. Um, there are a couple of surveys about the use of secure computation in genome data. It's actually quite uh, an active research area for a couple of years now. Uh, but uh, there is another uh, piece of work that I want to point out before I go on further. And this is actually quite an old uh, paper by Fangenbaum and Al. Actually, Rebecca was one of the co-authors. Um, the thing that you do when you try to design a specific protocol for a specific task is often you try to take the thing, the, the application domain, uh, and try to come up if you can with an approximate version of the function that's needed to be computed that's accurate enough for the application at hand, but much, much faster than running the uh, function in an, its exact form. And I will talk about how we did it. Uh, so there are clearly some utility Im, uh, implications for that. But that paper that I want to mention at pointed out that there are actually also security implications. Because you're not giving the exact result, maybe you're leaking some information information that would not have been leaked uh, by the, the right result. And I don't know if I have time to talk about it, but our solution definitely has that issue. So when you deploy solutions like that, you need to consider also that uh, aspect of them. Um, what is edit distance? Edit distance is you take the top sequence, you try to morph it into the bottom sequence by doing either letter substitution, insertions, or deletions, and you want to have the shortest sequence of changes from one to the other. Um, the Wagner-Fisher algorithm is an algorithm for solving it. Uh, in general, it works with n. If the length of the two sequences are n, it, it usually works in it, would work in n square comparison. Uh, or if you have some a priori bound of d on the distance, then you can work, make it work in n times d time. Um, and a priori, the thing that we want is to take our sequence, compute the edit distance to the 500 sequences in the database, find the, the, the smallest five, and return the results. What would that take? Well, our sequences are like 3,500 3, in length. Uh, doing the uh, um, edit distance algorithm, even if we know a priori that the distance is bounded by, let's say, 200, which was uh, roughly the, the right number for this data, uh, it means that you need like uh, almost a million comparison for every edit distance computation. Um, 
that means that if you want to write it in a circuit, it's about 50 million gates per comparison. You have 500 of them, that's 25 billion gates. We do have ways to do secure computation for every circuit that you give me. It's just that it gets slow. So for 25 billion gates, even if you take state-of-the-art secure computation techniques, it would take a couple of hours. Uh, and the thrust beyond, beyond what I'm going to describe next is an example of how you take a particular problem, look at it, design an approximation, which is good enough for the application domain, uh, and at the same time saves you many orders of magnitude in running time. Uh, the solution that we came up with is domain-specific uh, approximation of edit distance. It's domain-specific in two ways. A, it takes advantage of some public data that everybody knows in this particular application domain. And B, it works well on the data at hand. It's not an approximation algorithm on which we could prove any bounds. I can't prove that it works for every piece of data. Actually, it doesn't. Uh, but for the, for the data that we got, it actually works very well. Um, and then we designed a secure computation protocol for it uh, in the semi-honest model, which means the adversary model is a weaker one than you can think of, but uh, it's fairly common. Uh, the, the solution is very accurate empirically in the sense of 98% um, of the time on the data that we received, uh, you got the exact right answer out of it. So you wanted to get the five closest one, and it really gave you the five closest one. The other 2%, it gives you the six one instead, instead of one of the five ones. And the edit distance was actually just one bigger. Um, and it was very fast. So comparing a query to 500 sequences uh, took a circuit who which is about 60 times smaller than a single edit distance uh, circuit. So by uh, all in all, it's a 30,000x speed up over the naive solution. Uh, most of the work in this protocol is done offline. Each party pre-processes its own input. Uh, and then they have a very efficient secure computation protocol uh, to process it. In our case, 11 seconds was pre-processing the database. Two seconds was the actual compu uh, secure computation interaction between the two parties. Uh, so the starting idea is very simple. We start with an efficient approximation algorithm that tries to work as follows. You take the two sequences, you break them into blocks, very short blocks. In this example, uh, four characters in each block. And then you compute the edit distance between the corresponding blocks, and then you sum it all up. Um, so as your approximation, you just take the sum of the edit distance between the blocks. Now, this is already much better in terms of um, asymptotic complexity, because instead of doing n square work, you do n over b blocks. For each block, you do b square work. So it's n times b um, complexity, which is linear if b is small. Uh, so here, b, b is 4. Uh, so it's very efficient, but it's not a very, it's not very approximation. Uh, you really get bad results. So in this example, for example, uh, you, you uh, break it into blocks of size four, and you do the computation, and it turns out that the your approximated thing is eight. But actually, what happened in these sequences is that this uh, the second block has this additional t at the beginning, and if you remove that one, uh, then you can see that the actual thing is a uh, the actual uh, distance is a five. So the problem is how you break it into blocks, the alignment between the blocks is crucial. And indeed, this is the main difference between edit distance, which is what you really want to compute, and Hamming distance, which is essentially what we computed in this approximation algorithm that I showed you before. And the question, OK, maybe we can do this. We can make this um, procedure work well if we had a good way of breaking the sequences and having the alignment between them. But you know, one sequence held by the client, another sequence held by the server, they need to somehow uh, break them into a way that align to each other. How do you do that without actually computing the edit distance between them? Um, so for that, we're using the fact that in this uh, uh, application domain, everybody has access to the ref to the reference sequence. Uh, here we're going to call it R. Uh, 
Um, there is a reference assembly, re reference human genome that been published. This is version eight of it, I think. Uh, but it's a public thing. You can look it up on the web. Everybody has that. And you can identify this, the region of the genome in the reference genome uh, that correspond to the sequences that we're trying to compare now. And the hope is if, we if I align my sequence to the reference sequence and you align your sequence to the reference sequence, then our sequences would be also aligned to each other. So what we do is we break it into blocks by comparing it to the reference genome and hope that this alignment will be good uh, to align it to each other. Uh, how do we do that? Well, here we actually do compute edit distance, but we do it in the clear. I compute the edit distance with my uh, sequence and the reference, and you compare, compute the edit distance between your sequence and the reference. And this is not a secure computation problem. This is just straight out edit distance computation in the clear, which is much faster. You break the reference genome into blocks of, e of uh, uh, fixed size, so in this example, uh, size 2. And then you go over the edit distance computation that actually tells you where you did the insert, where you did the delete. So you, it actually gives you the alignment to the reference sequence. And you use that to break the sequence that you care about. And you apply that procedure separately at the server to break all the sequences in the database. This is the pre-processing that's done at the server and by the client to break the, qu the query. Um, and then you do this edit distance block by block. But once you do that and you look at the actual data that was supplied uh, by this uh, organizers of this competition, you turn, it turns out that there are many other interesting features of the data that you can use. And one of them is that if you look at each block individually, then even though the database has 500 sequences, there are only a handful of values that actually appear in each block. So the first block only had two possible values among all 500 sequences. The second, only four, et cetera. Uh, and moreover, in almost all cases, the value in that block, in let's say the third block in the query, also appears in the third block in the database, almost always. Um, so first of all, how many distinct value turns out to be a crucial efficiency parameter in our algorithm? And it was really very, very few. Uh, in the real data that taken from the real uh, genome database that we got from the organizer, across the 500, um, across the 500 uh, sequences, in each block we had at most six different values. Uh, if we bro broke them in, into blocks of length three, but even if you break them in blocks of much, much larger, like length 12, we still has 10 distinct values per, per block. So very, the growth was very, very slow. Basically, even there are only 5% variations between, uh, between sequences across the entire 3,500. So each block, most of them were the same, and the others were very close. Uh, what happens to larger databases? Well, we didn't have them. Uh, so we asked the organizer, can you give us databases? And they said, well, we don't have them either, but we'll generate some synthetic thing for us, for you. Uh, the synthetic things turns out to stress test our algorithm because it has had even more variations than the real data. It's like 10% difference or something like that. They weren't as well aligned to the uh, reference genome. So we had to jump through some hoop. We had to generate other reference genomes. There were some leakage issues. I'm not going to talk about it now because I don't have time. Uh, this, the, the point is that this eventually end up as serving as a stress test for the approach to see what you can do uh, in the really, really high variation uh, re uh, regime. Um, given that we only have very, very few uh, different uh, variations in each block, very few different values. And the fact that the almost all, all cases, uh, the value of the query in each block appears also in the database, it turns out, and I will uh, show it in the next slide, that it's instead of computing this approximation the way I said it before, computing at a distance between the block um, of the query and all the blocks in the database, it's much easier to just ignore blocks where the value of the query does not appear in the database. That 
almost has no impact on the result because A, it very rarely happens, and B, we don't really care about the added distance. All we care about is the order of the added distance. So even if it, you know, add F1 to all of them, or R3 to all of them, as long as it doesn't change the order, uh, we don't care that much. So instead of computing the added distance between each query blocks and all the database, we do it only in the cases where the uh, um, query block appears in the database and otherwise we just ignore it. Uh, and given that, this is what we do. So here is the server. And the server is looking at um, the first block. And let's say that the values in the first block, there are three possible values that can appear in the first block, either T, T, A, T, or T, C. And now the server, without talking to the client yet, think to itself, well, I'm going to ignore the client's value unless it's one of these three. So let's think what happens if it is one of these three. Well, if it's TT, then the edit distance between the client block and all the blocks in the database, all the first blocks for all the sequences in the database, will be one for the first uh, sequence, one for the second, two for the, th two for the, th the fourth, zero for the fifth, etc. The server already knows all the things in the database, and it can guess one of these three values for the things that the client has and pre-compute these big uh, vectors that says if the client um, value is this, then these are, this is the vector of added distances to all the sequences in the database. And similarly for the second block, and similarly for the third block, etc. So that's the pre-processing that happens at the server. And now comes the secure computation. Now the client comes. And the client has a particular uh, value, let's say it's 80. And now the client and the server together compute these characteristic bits that says, is the, uh, uh, does the uh, value that the client has equals to TT? Is it equal to 80? Is it equal to TC? So these are three bits that we can compute. Uh, in this example, the first bit is a 0, the second is a 1, the third is a 0. Um, and similarly, you can do it for the second block, etc. And now all you need to do is the server has these vectors of numbers. They computed jointly this shared bit. Uh, and all you need to do is multiply these bits by these vectors. That would identify only the right vector out of each block, and you sum them all together. So they end, end up, you end up with com having to compute this thing. The Ls are some numbers that are some vectors that the server knows, and the chi chi's are some bits that are held shared that are shared between the server and the client, uh, and nobody knows them in the clear, but they, between the two of them, they have the information. Uh, this is just, this is like uh, oblivious transfer, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. So the basic protocol is, well, I essentially explained that this is just a text description of what the picture was in the previous slides. Uh, you identify the set of uh, values, uh, you compute these vectors, you compute these bits, and you compute these, uh, these um, essentially linear combination, and the way you compute this linear combination is, uh, as, as Adam was saying, you just do an oblivious transfer. Um, what you, this is, yeah, this is the entire protocol. I don't have time or want particular want to go over the particular step on it. You can optimize things. For example, you switch between different representations so that you can do oblivious transfer. Uh, you work uh, modulus some numbers so that you can do all of this summation locally without actually having to compute anything uh, to interact in any way in, in with the other thing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And once you have these vec you compute this summation, you have the vector of approximate added distance, and now you only need to identify the five smallest elements in that. Uh, by that time, you already did most of the computation. Uh, finding the case smallest approximate edit distance out of the vector that we already computed, uh, we did it in a completely naive way. We just took, took a generic uh, transformation and applied it and ran it like that. Uh, there's very little da data uh, involved at this point, and it almost takes no time at all. 
Um, so here's the performance since this is the performance on the synthetic database because for the real database we only had one data uh, we only had database of size 500 and we wanted to show how the performance uh, scales with the size of the database uh, so you can see that the pre-processing takes most of the time and the actual computation takes very little time so this is computing the bits the cries this is summing them up and that's computing finding the five smallest values once you did this computation one thing that I want to point out is the bandwidth it ta they do need to send a lot of bits to each other uh, and that works very well when they're nearby if they need to do it over a long, uh, long distance this protocol would have taken more time uh, and the reason is that it just takes a lot of time to a lot of uh, bandwidth to compute uh, so I'm actually a little bit ahead of time. Um, so let me, you know, let me <laughs> stage my conclusions in the way I see them, uh, which I think is uh, easier after Andre's talk uh, before the break. Secure computation uh, is actually quite a mature technology by now. Uh, you know, when I started doing crypto, which was quite a while ago, uh, people would say that it's a promising technology. thing. It's not a promising technology. It's a mature technology. Uh, whenever you have a real life problem, if you really know the function that you want to compute, this, is, this was part of Anand's point as well, if you can extract a particular value, a particular function or a particular application where you want to apply it, in most or all cases, you would be able to design a protocol that would be good enough for the approximation, for the, uh, would be good enough for the application, uh, that the performance would be acceptable, uh, that you can run, that would uh, give you the right adversary model. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not an experimental technology anymore. We do have the the performance for pretty much everything we want to do. There are several asterisks there, of course, but uh, for the most part, I believe that that's the case. The main challenge with using secure computation is user interface engineering, uh, tools, etc. Yes, you can come. Uh, we can you can assemble together a team of crypto experts to design a protocol for you for every problem that you encounter. It's not a very viable development model. Uh, we need to be better than that. We need to have uh, you. Uh, we need to have UI solutions that would tell you when something is shared and when something is is uh, in the clear. We need to have libraries, software libraries for implementing them. We have generic constructions in theory. Uh, we don't so much have libraries, good libraries, usable libraries that implement them. Uh, so this is where I see the, um, the, the challenge in, on the technology side. And then there is the challenge on the application side. I mean, I think by and large, not in forums like that, but by and large, uh, in the general public and even in the IT industry, people don't view that as something that you can do. And therefore, they don't design their solution to take advantage of that. And that, I think, we should, we should change. Uh, secure computation is definitely doable in almost all ways that you want to think about. So with that, I'm done. Time for questions or any questions for Rishai? Yeah. Curious how long the query sequence was. So in this case, the query sequence was a particular segment of size about 3,500. Uh, this solution scales linearly with the length of the sequence and with the number of sequences. So, you know, 10 times uh, the, the length of the sequence, it would be 20 seconds instead of 2 seconds. Questions. I had so um, you, you know you mentioned sort of general purpose tools that are like uh, you know finding getting tools that that non crypto experts 
can use. Even getting tools that crypto experts can use is not very easy. <laughs> well, I, I guess that's where, where I was going with my question. Like, given how hard it is to get even, say, you know, encryption, which is like a very mature technology, kind of working well, and like there are lots of barriers to that, you know. I agree, getting but the, sort of yeah. technically sophisticated solutions to work in, in real life, right? I, I, I agree, but there's in my mind that there's a big difference between encryption and secure computation. Encryption, we have products that everybody can use. They're flawed. There are security problems, but everybody can use them. Secure computation, we don't have even that. I mean, I want some. I want. Well, I would love it to be the case that everybody can design their own secure computation, and there are bugs in it that we need to solve, right? It's not the case. I mean, the the Tools that we have are very special purpose. The, even the implementations that are out there are typically one-off in order to demonstrate that this technology works faster than the other, or things like that. They're not built for ease of use. So I guess the, the, the question I really wanted to ask is who, who do you think should be I would love to do that. I would love to have like a government grant that give me five people for two years to write a usable secure computation. You know, we, there, are, there is some kind of, so the, the thing that they did in BU was clearly the right thing, right? They identified a place where you can actually deploy it and then show everybody that it works. Uh, and even, you know, so this thing in terms of the function that you try to compute is a lot more complicated and a lot more sophisticated, but we did this work six months ago. We've been looking for six months for people who want to use it. So far, I uh, didn't find anyone. So, I mean, there, there are definitely... Could you give a little bit more sense of what, what you mean by user? Like, it is more time. I'll give you an example of what I mean by not usable, okay? That's, that's <laughs> probably easier. The current, the, I, I'm using SCAPI. SCAPI is, uh, is, is actually quite well thought of library for crypto primitives. But when it comes to interactive protocol, it insists of implementing itself the communication infrastructure. If I want to implement it over, I don't know, gRPC or whatever other things, no, I can't. Um, the very, very basic low-level things. I, as an expert in this area, want to be able to sit down for a week and write a, a, a solution for one particular problem. But I can't do that. In this case, there were two programmers and four cryptographers for two months to write the solution. That's not usable. Yeah, actually, I don't know. Maybe I missed it, but I talk maybe it was there like to what degree because it sounds like you just came up with a better algorithm to solve the problem as a side effect of trying to optimize it for MPC. is that true or? it's uh well yeah i mean in the yes um even though you know it's better when you apply secure computation to it i mean in terms of uh you know if you had to do it in the clear it would still work faster than the normal uh, tensor, but you wouldn't care because the, norm, the normal edit distance would work fast enough for you. I see. Because, because the point is, I mean, one comparison point of usable is, well, how long would it have taken you to make this better algorithm if you didn't have to worry about multi-party computation and compare it to how, how long it did take you this time? And that could be one way. So I, I think would you implement it? No, no, to think of it. Let's just say that you weren't thinking about multi-party computation at all. You just wanted to make this algorithm faster, and you did did what you did, and you. So, so somehow I sort of doubt that I would even bother thinking about it again because because I wouldn't care because the edit distance would be fast enough for my purposes. Uh, I definitely spend not a whole lot, but you know, if if you count my own time, maybe. 10 hours on thinking of secure computation related optimization to this thing. Here you can use oblivious transfer, here if you use Yao here and, and BGW there, it would work there. Things like that that are, are, that are very secure computation. But you know, it, it's in the hours, it's not in the months. But between, the all, between all of us, there's a lot more work in implementing that than anything sensible if you want people to actually be able to use it on a regular basis. When you think about the reason people haven't been up, you know, taking up what you've developed, is it is it this exact solution for this exact problem, or is it a generalization of this to some other area? Because the clinical utility of that specific motivation isn't 
clear to me, at least. I'm not sure many doctors or patients would really want to know who the five most similar people are and whatever information is tagged that's associated with it. So, again, the state of the art of secure computation is if if I sit down with a doctor and he tells me this is what I want to do and I can't do it now, can you design a secure computation for me to do it? I have very little doubt that with some work I would be able to do that. I didn't find a doctor to have that conversation with and that's saying something in, the, in, 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 in light of the fact that I'm actually trying to find one. Uh, and, uh, and you know, you can't enlist the work of a crypto expert for every problem that you have, but I, my sense is that the way we, the, the place where we are right now is we need to come up with examples of running protocols, things that are used before we can generalize them. So we need to build the tools and we need to come up with this example, that example, and that example, and then we can generalize. I, it's possible in theory to generalize. Uh, however, the optimizations right now are very specific to, uh, so I'm, I don't know if I answered the question. Yeah, I guess I, I, this might be, might not be helpful. So I'm part of a, a, a project that is associated with Jackson Laboratories, and they build a panel that will give you, is, is intended to give patients and doctors actionable inter genomic information or solid things, not term. So but, uh, it's, uh, one of the issues is just deciding what's really actionable in that case and what really ought to be shared and how to even help doctors understand it is a, is a big problem to be solved in terms of the clinical utility of health information. So it's just, that's, that may be part of the background of, of what you're struggling with, you're struggling to find when you're, when you're looking for positions. That, so actually, yeah, I mean, may, so maybe we should talk a little bit offline because I really want to find somebody who would tell me, I really want to do that, but I can't. This is, I mean, that kind of thing is really what I'm looking for. All right, let's thank Shai again.